All right, y'all, what is up? Let's go, man. It is Friday, and I'm in the best mood ever. I have not left my house this happy in quite a long time, especially it's been so dead out here. So today is Friday, one of my favorite days of the week, and uh, man, I'm happy. I, I got a renewed mind, man. I got a renewed mind. I'm gonna tell y'all why a little later. I'm gonna tell y'all why. But uh, anyways, so I got up this morning, regular routine, you know, getting the kids ready for school, sending them off, and, uh, you know, just kind of washing up. And dispatch has, you know, they, they send orders out in the morning, but majority of them are car orders. A lot of car orders, you know, $15, $20, you know, to drive 26 miles, all that stuff. So I'm not interested in those. I'm not leaving my house for that. So. Typical morning, those type of orders coming out. And uh, you know, I always decline them. I decline them and I put pay too low. Decline, pay too low, every time. So, I'm washing up and my phone go off again. My hands all wet and stuff. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna just let that ride. But some in my mind, some told me, check this one out. Just, just look at it. So I dry my hand real quick. I click on my phone and I see the price. And I said, man, I ain't seen that in a long time on dispatch. Cargo van, and it had the amount. So of course, I had like 15 seconds left to accept it. So I accepted it, I got it. I'm on my way to it right now. It is, uh, it's eight o'clock right now. I'm supposed to be there at 8.20. Um, I got this order at like 7.15 in the morning. So I usually start around 8.30, um, but I'm starting a little early because of this order. So, this reminds me of when I first started. I first started on Dispatch. That's the very first app I started on. If you go to my very first videos that I posted, I was doing pretty much all Dispatch, and it was on fire. I was making really good money. With I probably was averaging about nine to $1,100 a week just on Dispatch, not even the other apps. It was on fire, and uh, I love Dispatch. Dispatch has, I've kind of always advocated for them. I always felt that they're the best. I love the app, I love the layout. They're very unique from the other companies. Um, they're one of the few that will send an order directly to you. So, you know, it's based on where you're at, but a lot of the other orders, the other, other uh, apps don't do that. You know, Freight, GoShare, all, they just throw it out there and Whoever could click on it the fastest or whoever's phone has the fastest network, they get it. So it doesn't really give everyone an opportunity to get work. Dispatch will send it directly to you and you have 45 seconds to accept or decline. I love that. Um, like I said, I never had an issue with support, never had an issue with pay, other than their cancellation. Uh, that kind of sucks. Uh, I've always advocated for the app. I love it. I think it's one of the best. And uh, I know I do notice there are some improvements to it. Just they're just making it as easy as they can for us. Um, another thing is the webinars. They've been having a lot of webinars. Uh, I missed the last one. It was about uh, Sunrun, but I don't have Sunrun in my market. They're doing these webinars, and they're listening to our complaints. And uh, I respect that, man. There's no other company doing that. And. I, I always say I feel like they really are trying to help us make money and I try to see it from both sides I understand that you know the money doesn't come from thin air like it's got to come from somewhere and you know they have to make their money to keep the company afloat but I believe that they really do want to pay us as much as they can as much as we work and I see the improvements I see that they care and I'm not trying to get you on a bandwagon or not. I'm just saying, Dispatch has been really good to me. I love the app. Um, it's probably one of the easiest apps, the best layouts. They pay every Monday, never had an issue with pay. So anyways, I appreciate all of them. Uh, it's nice to see, put a face to a name. There's a lot of people that work for Dispatch, you know, the administrative side that, you know, we, we, we're seeing them on the webinars. They're listening to our complaints, and uh, it looks like they're taking action, man. And I have noticed that orders are picking up. I noticed that there's more orders coming out, even though 
they're for cars. I'm seeing a lot of companies I've never seen before. So I don't know if they added more companies or what, but they're definitely trying to improve. And I appreciate that. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna say on that is, you know, currently right now, I am trying to build my own clients. I'm trying to build my own clients. I'm trying to work directly with a company uh, to get work for myself. And that is not easy. It's not easy. I don't know why some people think that's really easy, but it's not. It's not like you just walk into some company and say, hey, I'm an independent contractor. Can I do some deliveries for you? And they say, oh yeah, absolutely. We'll pay you a hundred dollars a load. It don't work like that. Um, so I'm, I'm out here currently trying to build my business like that. And it is not easy, y'all. It is not easy to get guaranteed uh, consistent work for yourself. So that's this is why I love the gig apps. I gotta stop thinking like other people. A lot of people don't like them. They talk about them. There's a lot of stuff to complain about, but I'm gonna tell you, man, they got the customers, they got the contract, um, they provide you with work. It goes straight to your phone. You get paid, direct deposit. All you gotta do is do it. Don't do it or do it. That's it. Do the job and you get paid. You can't, it can't get easier than that. I have done, I complain about Dolly all the time and Dolly is horrible. Their customer support is horrible, but I have to admit, they have some great paying orders. And like I, I did a washer, just a washer by itself and made like $85. And I drove like six miles and I'm like thinking to myself, like, man, this is great pay. Like, why am I listening to these, these, these people that just don't know what they are talking about? That is excellent pay. It was so easy. Can I get a hookup like that with a company? Probably, but it's taking time. Like it, it could take me a whole year before I get a hookup, you know, where I can do loads like that for myself without the gig app. So y'all, man, I'm telling you, man, I love these gig apps. I appreciate them. And I, I'm, I'm taking advantage of today. I don't know if this is the only order I'm gonna get like this this week, but it just brought back memories of how good Dispatch was and how much I appreciate it and how easy they make it for me to make money for my business. And that's really, that's what it's about. So anyways, uh, not to be too long, man. I'm just excited, man. Like there's a huge amount of joy. I got something to share with y'all uh, how I changed my mindset. My mindset is different. And I gotta thank my CEO, man. He helped me realize this. He helped me realize it uh, a couple days ago. I'm gonna share it with y'all at the end. So I'm headed to, I believe PPG. And the route is gonna be 21 miles. I'm actually, I don't share my earnings anymore. I told you guys why. I just, I'm gonna share this one only because I haven't got paid like this in a long time. So that's the only reason I'm gonna share this one. But I'll be picking up paint from PPG and I'll be driving 21 miles for the uh, the delivery route. All right, y'all, we are rolling up to, yeah, it is PPG. I can't remember if it was PPG or Sherwin-Williams. We are going to PPG. So this is a pretty big paint order. It's probably gonna fill my whole van up. Move on out of the way, lady. Move on out of the way. There's our 50 cans of paint. So 50 cans. So we got all these. I got these tied down. And then uh, they had uh, double stacked it on a pallet. So the, 
I didn't have to, um, they say room. Uh, because I think, I think 50 cans can fit in here, but it'll be really, really tight. And I don't want to double stack them uh, unless they're shrink wrapped like this. So uh, it's a lot of weight, a lot of weight. It's probably why the pay's so high. But uh, yep, about to drive 21 miles to get this dropped off. complex a brand new construction <clears throat> but I'm delivering to the painters house um, and I guess they don't have any uh, containers usually they have these big connexes that we put the paint in and they uh, they use that to secure the paint <clears throat> they don't have that at that location so I have to deliver this to the customers house because uh, people still paint and I've, I've been told that multiple times by other uh, painters when they have these big apartments, there's multiple companies that work there. It's not just one company. And uh, they steal each other's paint and stuff. So can't just leave it at the job site. So I was wondering why I'm going to somebody's house, but it makes sense now. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> get this dropped off and then uh, head back to town. It's only nine o'clock, so good timing right now. All right, y'all, looks like I'm here, and this is a beautiful home. Oh my goodness, this house is amazing. So, um, actually wait, is this it? Oh, I'm sorry, well this house is beautiful. Let me show you this one real quick. I don't know if y'all can see that. That house is amazing. Man, that's all, uh, and it's got a back house too. Oh man, that's amazing. It's actually the, next, the house next door, which is also nice. A lot of these homes are custom built. So I'm in, um, city of Floresville so very country but um, people oh yeah this house is nice too the garage is open so it looks like this guy's expecting me uh, probably uh, look like we probably gonna unload into his garage so this is the address right here uh, let's see is somebody gonna see me or I need to call that's just nice man All right, y'all, so I'm kind of in a weird situation. So I don't have any reception where I'm at. So I can't even use my phone, I can't call. There's a lady that came out in the garage, but she didn't acknowledge me. She just walked in the house. I'm sitting here, so <clears throat> I can't call the customer. And uh, there's another gate on the side of this house. So I'm actually, I'm gonna pull in here. I'm gonna keep recording, because I don't know. I know this is definitely the right address, so uh, I would like the lady to come out so I can make sure, but I don't want uh, I don't want no problems, man. So this gate is open in the back. I'm gonna come in here, and hopefully somebody come out. Don't come shooting at me either. But I can't even call the store or anything. I'm only coming in here because, uh, you know what? Actually, because if I got to take this back, I can't even call dispatch or nothing. My phone is uh, is working uh, offline. This is definitely uh, th this is definitely the right address because I see a, um, a ladder with paint all over it. I just wish that lady would come out and acknowledge me. She could tell I'm trying to get it on her property.
man. Just come out, lady. If something happened to me, y'all, it's, it's gonna be on film, y'all. I can't even call. Oh man, it's a messed up situation, man. A few moments later. All right, y'all. So we got it figured out. Um, I thank, thank goodness. So the neighbor right here next door, it's a lady. Uh, you're gonna see her in a second. She's gonna be on the right hand side behind the gate. So she just came outside. So I just actually went to her and asked her if she has uh, her neighbor's phone number and she does. So she called and I don't know if this, this lady might be a housekeeper or something. That's probably why she didn't uh, come talk to me. But this lady right here to the right, if you can see her in the pink, she, thank you lady. She, uh, she called and uh, the lady speaks Spanish. So she told me to deliver there. I guess there's a warehouse all the way in the back of this property. So um, they, they said, uh, nobody's here to sign for it and nothing like that. They said, just drop it off and, and uh, they're good to go. So, oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, it kind of sucks because my, uh, I don't have any service. So dispatch allows you to work offline now, but I, can't, I couldn't call anybody. I can't contact support. I'm just stuck and um, the fact that the lady wasn't like, like, she saw me at the gate and she didn't even come to me. So I'm like, I didn't feel very welcome. <laughs> so, uh, and then the gate was locked. So it's like, she wasn't letting me in. So I didn't know what to do. So there was other, another gate on the side. And uh, I'm like, let me drive around the back. Maybe she'll come out then. And she still didn't come out. So I'm like, you know what? So I do see paint here. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna put, it's a lot of mud here. I'm gonna put it right behind this van. So let me back up here. All right, y'all, so I'm just gonna dump it right here. And uh, there's some horses back there too. So they didn't give me specific instructions. She said, just put it back there by the warehouse. So uh, I'm not gonna film this whole thing. I'll probably do a little time lapse or something, but. Uh, so this should take me probably about uh probably about 10 minutes. Get this unloaded. It's a good thing I got this on this pallet, man. They all stacked up in the front, so I'll get these off pretty quick. And then I just have to get the uh the ones in the back. So I'm just gonna stack them back here. I'm gonna box that not gonna box that van man let's put them right there y'all so all done um it was it took about almost 10 minutes um so this is a lot of paint and um so this order paid 111 dollars to drive 23 miles so this is a lot of paint and i did have to unload it i loaded my van just some of the paint and then they loaded majority of it with the pallet and I did have to unload it off of my van. I'm gonna tell you guys right now and 
I'm doubling down on what uh, my guy DDK said. Some of y'all are just pure lazy. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I will do an order just like this for $111 every day, all day. Give me like two or three of these. I'll do it every day. I do not mind working. I do not mind breaking a sweat. I don't mind. I've worked before. I've done labor jobs. This is nothing, y'all. Nothing. 50 can, 50, 50 pound gallons of paint. 50 pounds. That's it. And I could do this all day. So, uh, so I don't care what people think. If you think this is not worth it because you're too lazy to do this, to unload, for, to work for 10 minutes and making $111, I don't know what's wrong with you, but, uh, you know, times are changing. Generations are different. Nobody wants to work. Everybody wants to make money doing nothing. Nobody want to work with their hands. So I'll be that generation that keeps on working with my hands. Um, so anyways, good to go. Uh, I'm about to, uh, I can't close this out until I get into a reception area. So, um, yeah, man, I'm about to head back to town and see if I can get anything else. Great order though. All right, y'all, uh, made it back to town. Uh, took about, I had stopped at QT to use the restroom and I waited probably about 20 minutes and I got a really good order. I'm excited, man, because like I said, I have not seen orders like this for a long time. So I'm very excited. I got a dispatch order. Uh, I'm picking, I'm 13 miles. I'm sorry, 12 miles from the pickup right now. And uh, I am driving 70 miles to the drop off. So this might be my last uh, delivery because by the time I get back to town, it's probably gonna be like around two o'clock and a lot of the orders, they kind of slow down around that time. So I probably wouldn't get anything else. But um, this is definitely gonna put me over my goal. And I will show you guys the pay on this. And like I said, I'm only showing because like I said, I haven't seen orders like this in a long time. This is how dispatch used to pay. So I don't know what's going on today, but I'll take it. All right, y'all, so just confirm. So I'm going to uh, Sherman Williams. Uh, it's probably gonna be a small load. So I'm basically, I'm kind of getting paid more for the drive than the weight. Um, but, you know, it's still worth it. So these are tricky. Um, I usually don't like taking these long distance uh, orders even if they're high pan because they don't you know you have to dead head back it's not like they get you a load back so you have to dead head back i'm going 70 miles out um but this one is worth it for me for the pay with the miles that i have to drive even with the dead head back uh i'm good with it and um uh, you know it's it's kind of like the middle of the busy time so it's gonna start slowing down anyway. So if I did not take this order, there's a chance I wouldn't make the money I'm about to make right now. So I'd rather just get it. Um, you kind of take yourself, you uh, you take yourself out of the uh, the game when you take orders like this. So um, I won't be able to accept anything else until I get back to town. But uh, like I said, this probably be my last order, and uh, I believe it's worth it. So. All good. This is my first time at this Sherman Williams. Never been to this one before. Two thousand years later. All right, y'all. So this is my load. Uh, it took about thirty minutes to get this load. So I'll explain what happened when I get on the road. Let me get going. All right, y'all. So we are on the highway. Uh, it's gonna be pretty much a straight shot. Uh, it's an hour and eight minutes. So 77 miles, that's what I'll be driving. So just two things that I learned while I was there. I've never been to this Sherwin Williams before, but I like the manager there, he's a cool dude. So there's a lot of misconceptions about how these gig apps work and everyone kind of has their own idea of how they work. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna tell you what I learned, what I saw with my own eyes. So. The order comes out on my phone and it had a pay, right? That's, it, it had a set amount of pay that I'm supposed to get to do this job. How that's determined, I don't know. That's something I got to confirm with dispatch of uh, 
sorry about that. I had a phone call. Um, so anyways, uh, I have to confirm with dispatch how the pay is determined, but this is based on what the conversation I had with the, the manager. So this, the customer who I'm delivering to requested this order to Sherman Williams and Sherman Williams and me, me and my, one of my partners out here, we was just talking about this the other day uh, on the phone. So a lot of the, I told you guys about the big orders I used to get when I first started. The, 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 the ones like I did earlier today, 50 cans, 40 cans, all that. So if you guys remember a couple videos back, I had did a, showed you guys a bunch of box trucks and cargo vans that the company had, PPG and Sherman Williams. They got a lot of drivers now. So those big orders, the, the, their company drivers are doing those, those deliveries. So that's why we don't see them anymore. These orders right here are last minute. This is a last minute order. The drivers are gone. They need to get it out. And that's when they're using us, the third party delivery drivers. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of those big loads uh, because their, their drivers are doing those. So this is a last minute order and that's why they're using dispatch to get it delivered. Um, I could not take the load. So when, once everything was done, I was ready to load and the managers are, oh, you can't take it yet. The delay is that the customer has not paid. So they, you, this stuff does not move until the customer pays. So obviously out of that money, I'm assuming that's where our money comes from because if, if, this, if this was already paid for, it doesn't matter if the customer paid or not. So I kind of learned that. I kind of I kind of knew that already, but he just confirmed that this money comes from the customer and it, it is not moving until it, it gets paid for. Once the customer paid, he, he was trying to call, the customer wasn't answering, finally got a hold of him after like 15 minutes and he got the credit card number over the phone and then once it was paid, that's when I could take it. So those are pretty much the two things that I, I kind of learned or confirmed my suspicion is that, cause I had that before where a customer had not paid so the order got canceled. Like they're not gonna deliver unless it's paid. So we're, we're trying to figure out where is this money coming from? So a lot of us, we kind of complain about the pay, but you know, the pay comes out of the money that the customers pay. You know, and I don't know how dispatch charges their customers, but once you put all that together, you can kind of figure out, you know, where this money comes from and why the pay it is, you know, is what it is. So anyways, um, those are the two things. Customer got to pay for it to move and they are not using, a, at least in my market, they are not using third party deliveries for the big orders. Unless it's a last minute, gotta get it out. Our drivers can't do it. That's when you'll see it. That's probably what I had to deal with today. So that's the only way I got that order. Other than that, their drivers are handling most of these big paint orders. So it's gonna be a lot of car orders right now. And I'm seeing a lot of them. Probably about 20 a day are coming out. Um, the little small car orders. So I got about, uh, about an hour drive and I'll let you guys know when I'm close. All right, y'all, so I'm about, I just drove about 30 minutes. I got about 30 more minutes. Uh, you probably can't see it with my GoPro. I can't zoom in, but this place right here, this little guy with the hat, that's called uh, Choke Canyon Barbecue. Choke Canyon Barbecue. I've been there before when I was working my old job. I ate at that restaurant. Um, that place is the bomb, y'all. It is the bomb. If I could find a picture, I took a picture of what I had. I think it was a brisket sandwich. If I could find it, I'll, I'll put it on here. But uh, that place is the bomb, man. And they have uh, alligator meat. I have never had alligator meat in my life. And uh, one day I'm going to try it. One day. But uh, yeah, man. That's the spot right there. All right, y'all. So I'm about uh, 10 minutes out. And I'm going to a city I've never been to in my life. This is uh, Tilden, Tilden, Texas. Never heard of it, never been here before. Uh, it's kind of on the way to Corpus Christi though. 
So uh, I have to say, I don't like drives like this. You guys already know that. But I have not seen another vehicle for like 30 miles. There's no cars behind me. No cars have passed me for like 30 miles. I don't like that. Because, you know, and then my phone, I don't think I got reception on my phone. So just imagine, you know, breaking down a place like this. I had to go knock on somebody's door for help. But it is nobody out here, man. No cars, no nothing. Completely on my own. What's this? Oh, oh that's a cat. About to be roadkill. Um, it's a lot of animals out here. I've seen a lot of deer. I've seen some uh, wild hog, a couple wild hogs. Uh, what else I see? I've seen a red bird. I don't know what kind of bird that is, but it was like red. I think it was red and uh, it was either white or yellow underneath. Never seen that before. But no people, no cars, no people. All right, y'all, finally, people. This is my first time seeing cars in like 30 miles. So, um, looks like I'm getting close. It's gonna be on my left-hand side. Uh, we did call the customer before I left, so they know I'm on my way. So somebody should be looking for me. And it looks like it's gonna be uh, one of these properties up here. I think it's gonna be this uh, this building up here on the left. They don't look like nobody over here too. So somebody's supposed to be here. Gate is closed. Oh man, I don't see nobody over here, bro. Is this even the address? It's saying that I'm here. I might have turned too early though. Let me, uh, I'm gonna go a little bit further down the street. All right, so my nav said I was here, but um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's gonna be this place. I just went a little further down the road. Sometimes uh, out here in the country, the, the uh, GPS is off a little bit. Let's see, I'm trying to see the address. This gotta be it. Nope. Wait, no, this is it. This address don't match, but it's the name of the company. Shoreline. Yeah, they gave me a different address though. So, but it's the same company name, so this gotta be the place. Yeah, this address is 1400 something, but uh, the address they gave me is 1371, so. Let's see. I don't think anybody here, man. I would drop it. I saw some uh, the paint, the same paint that I have. I see it in the uh, warehouse back here, but I don't want to leave it if it's not the right address because the number's not adding up. <clears throat> There's nobody here. Hello? Yeah, this is this is the type of paint they got, and uh, the company name matches. It's the same company name. All right, let me see. Make a quick phone call. All right, y'all. We figured it out. So uh, the guy just showed up, and I'm actually gonna put this load on his truck. 
So we are good to go. <clears throat> All right, did you want uh, everything back here? Yeah. Or? Okay, because it's kind of like uh, loose cans. And it's the last one of this. Uh, you want this here, in here? Oh, uh. not sure. Let me, uh. One more of these. Okay. <clears throat> these two and then uh, the buckets and that's it. <clears throat> and these. <clears throat> all right, y'all. So all done. Uh, it's uh, almost a little past two o'clock. I'm about an hour, a little over an hour uh, from my house. So I'm gonna end this video. I do have something to share with you guys, but it's not for everyone. So I know when I mention God, it turns some people off. Uh, unfortunately, God will always be a part of my channel and my life. I'm not gonna change that for nobody. So the, the comments don't bother me. I don't care what people say or think. I'm gonna do what I wanna do on my channel. I'm gonna talk about what I want to on my channel. But the, the, the comments that bother me are ones like this. This is a comment, I actually saved it. And I, I, it bothers me because I, I feel bad for this person. That's all I'm gonna say on that. I just feel bad for them. So anyways, uh, I'm just gonna tell you how much I made on this job, what I made total, and then it's up to you if you wanna continue watching. If you're not interested in anything I gotta say about my CEO, uh, then you can turn it off after this. So, the two jobs I did, two dispatch orders, uh, 111, and then this one actually paid a little bit more. It was at 130 something, 131 I believe. And uh, I did have a significant wait time, so they paid extra. So I ended up getting $142. So total for today it's a great day um i did drive a little more miles than i normally do but the mile still wasn't bad i mean i probably drove less than 150 miles so uh, my total is uh, 253 dollars so great 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 way to end uh my friday of course you guys know every day is a work day every day i'm available so if anything pops off over the weekend i will be available uh, and um, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. So that's the end of this video. Uh, it's up to you if you want to continue watching. Some of you guys probably will. Some of you guys will turn it off. That's fine. Some of you guys are going to understand what I'm saying. Some of you guys might be curious. And some of you guys don't care. That's perfectly fine. But I'm sharing this because this is my channel. And I want to be myself. I want to be able to share my thoughts, my true feelings. And my mental is very important for how I run my business. So anyways, I'll, I have more to say on that on another video. 
let me just tell you why I changed my mindset. I told you guys that at the beginning of this video. So, uh, a couple days ago, I was in my office and I was working hard at my second business. I told you guys I have another business. I haven't told you guys what it is yet, but I will. I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm also gonna share everything about it and how you could probably do it too. So I was working on that and I have a, a Bible app on my phone and it gives me a Bible verse every day. Every day I get one Bible verse, a random verse, something different every day. And this was amazing. So I'm there, I'm working and this Bible verse pops up and it's from uh, the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12. I'm not gonna read it to you, but I highly recommend anybody that's interested, read Luke chapter 12, the whole chapter, because a lot of people read one verse and they just kind of explain what it's talking about. But if you actually read the entire chapter in context, it has a totally different meaning. So read the entire chapter. I'm just gonna paraphrase. I'm not gonna read it to you. Uh, and that's, I'm talking about the first half of it because there's uh, several subjects in there. So basically I read one verse and it got me to read the whole chapter. I said, you know what? I want to read this whole chapter. So. I read the chapter and basically uh, this is a time where Jesus is preparing his disciples for uh, what they're going to face because they're about to go out. You know, once Jesus dies and is gone, they're going to go out and spread the word, the gospel. And he's like mentally preparing them for what they're going to face. And he's telling them, you know, basically not to fear. Do not fear man. A lot of people fear man. God is saying, don't fear man. Yes, a person could kill you. They could kill your body, but that's all they can do. Once you're dead, they can't do anything else to you. They can't harm you anymore. Jesus said, a person that's wise does not fear man. You should fear the creator. You should fear God. He's the one that can kill your body and your soul. He can throw you into hell. That's the person you should fear. Now, whether you believe in that or not, that's totally up to you. Uh, I'm not here to prove that. I'm just sharing my mindset. This is what affects my mindset. So he's preparing them for that and he's getting them mentally prepared for what they're gonna face. Uh, he talks about hypocrites and all that. But then the interesting part is he talks about wealth and money. So he basically gives an example of a rich person that um, they have, I, I, I wanna, I'm sorry, I, I can't quote it exactly, but I believe the rich person was like, had crops or something. And it was an abundance of crop, like too much to handle. And the rich person decided to build more storage for their crops and they, they did, they went to work, they got the, the storage, more storage, uh, and they, they put all the crops in there so that they can harvest all of it. And the rich person's mindset was, man, I'm rich. Like, I don't even have to work no more. Like, we got enough food and crops, you know, to last us for years. And um, basically Jesus was saying that that person was a fool not wise because and he, he said that he said that you know today you're gonna die today you die because that's foolish so the point is he's saying that you know this person built their wealth they built their wealth and they worked so hard at building their wealth here on earth that the the one that controls their life they're breathing because of the one you know, because of God, he took their life. So now all of that work and wealth that they built for themselves, they can't use it. It's gonna go to somebody else that didn't work for it and they cannot use it, it's useless. You built all that for nothing. So he's basically saying, where's your priorities? You should be building your wealth above, right? God has prepared a kingdom for you and your wealth should be focused above 
where it cannot be corrupted, it cannot be taken away, you're gonna actually enjoy it. So I know it's kind of deep. Some people might not understand this, but some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, I bring that up because I have been, on my channel, I've been trying to become successful. And a lot of people measure success by what you have. How much money you have, how much money you make, how many cars you have, what kind of car you have, what kind of house you have. And that's how people measure success. So if I had a big house and a bunch of cars and a lot of money coming in, you think I'm successful in your eyes. Because I don't have all that, I'm not successful. Because I don't make what you make or what you think I should make, I'm not successful. What God just taught me a couple days ago is he taught me that I am already successful. And my success came when I quit my job and I purchased this vehicle right here. The day that I bought this vehicle, I became successful. So it may not make sense, you may not understand that, but that's what I learned. That's what he taught me a couple days ago. So I've been working on trying to impress you guys and increase my earnings and, and you know make more money and you know be able to buy another vehicle and just do all the things that you know requires a lot of money thinking that that's how I prove that I'm successful to you but God said I don't need to do that he said I, I gave you an I gave you an opportunity to purchase a vehicle and that vehicle freed you from your nine to five and that vehicle has been providing for you for over a year now you've paid all your bills you pay your mortgage you never missed a payment you're able to go grocery shopping you're able to buy everything you need all the food everything you need you have it how are you not successful why what what makes you not successful you need more is that what you're saying and that's what he taught me and that was deep man like it, it hit me like a ton of bricks man and I, I literally shut my computer off i went and sat down with my family and we watched the movie and i said you know what this could wait I got nothing but time to continue to build and grow my business, but it's all about priority. Where's your priorities? And I think that has, and like I said, I'm only sharing this because this is my thought process. And this is why I feel I'm already successful. So is, is God gonna add more success? Possibly, but that's not what I need to be working towards. I'm already successful. I'm already my own business. I'm already making the money I need, not that I want, the money I need, I'm already successful. And a lot of you guys are too, you just don't realize it. We always try to impress each other. Stop thinking about other people. Stop trying to impress other people. You know, uh, don't work, don't be focused so hard on making more money to the point that you forget, you know, what was truly important. So that was a powerful, powerful chapter. And that's why I love reading God's word because it's true. It's the best advice you can get here on earth. There's nobody that can top the wisdom of God. And that's why it's a part of me. It's a part of my channel and it's a part of my business and it always will be. So do not try to silence me or ask me not to talk about God or what's on my mind because that's part of my channel. If you don't like that, I'm not forcing you to be on my channel. You can leave. A lot of people that do hate on my channel, they continue to watch my channel. I don't understand that. They continue to watch and comment. You know, it's just like that street preacher. If whatever religion you are, you might see a street preach preacher doing his thing. All you have to do is keep on walking. You know, if you don't agree with what they're saying, you don't believe what they're saying, keep on walking. You don't have to confront them. You don't have to say nothing to them. Just it go, let it go in one ear and out the other and keep on pushing. But it's like, you know, a lot of people do that, but then they keep coming back. It's like, if you, if you don't want to hear it, why do you keep coming back? I don't understand that. So anyways, I just want to share that, man. That That's what brought me great joy today because I realized I am already successful. 
what what am i doing you know i'm just building up on what i already have so that's all i gotta say i highly recommend read luke chapter 12 man um uh, it helped me a lot i'm done y'all have a good one i'm very happy y'all have a great weekend and uh man i will catch y'all on the next one